But what sort of day was it for Manchester City? You did say at the end they're no worse off than they were on Friday morning no. uh, with Arsenal having lost as well. So, um, but but we we're very reluctant to point a finger at Pep Guardiola, understandably. No, we, we <laughs> but, can't. But, can but, we, but, we, we but there's to. something there's something not not City like about them. No, do you know something, Martin? Two, three weeks ago, I was asked who I thought would win the league, and I said Manchester City. And to be fair, I've said it a couple of times since. You asked me on this podcast, and yeah. Arsenal fans have obviously been up in arms about that, thinking that I'm not paying them respect. However, I have to say that when I, when, yesterday when Arsenal lost, because of what's happened in this last week, I said this to you before the game, I'm less sure about City. I said this to you before the game. Mm-hmm. I'm less sure about City before this game than I was two weeks ago. And today they can go within two points of Arsenal. That seems really strange. But the Cancelo incident, the leaving out of De Bruyne, Diaz and Laporte still stuck on the bench, just things that I look at and think Gundogan not playing today. It just feels all a little bit odd. Some would call it tinkering. You know, he's a genius, Pep Guardiola, and this is a moment in time. But he isn't beyond criticism. We have to notify people when we think that we see something that's not strange. And this is a very odd period in the sense of what's going on. We said a few weeks ago when we did this reverse fixture, why is De Bruyne not playing? Why is Cancelo not playing? Why is so-and-so not playing? Why is Diaz and um, and Laporte not back at centre-backs? I'm still thinking that now, but he made us look stupid a few weeks ago because obviously they came back and won 4-2. But not to satisfy him because after that game, even though they come back and won the game, he made uh, that press conference and the the interview um, with us about um, things not being right. uh, They're not right. No, no. Honestly, today... That was not, I mean, forget the fact that they've lost 1-0. There's been times when I've watched Pep Guardiola's teams lose and I've thought that's, that's still a Pep Guardiola performance. The amount of times that they got counter-attacked on today, the amount of times that they got broken through, the amount of space that they gave up in midfield and the joy that Benton Kerr and Hoiberg had, that doesn't happen. When Manchester City are absolutely at their best, they make sure they sustain attack. So they'll keep the ball up in the final third of the pitch. They'll play it around. They'll often give it away. But then when they give it away, they'll go and win it back nine, nine times out of ten within a 20, 30-minute sort of space. So at 20, 30-yard space. Today, they were having to charge back to their own goal. And that's because they're just not right. You know, I, I spotted the sort of idea of that, that right channel where Rico Lewis was playing. I thought if he comes into midfield, Kulisevsky and Kane will spring into that side with Emerson Royale, and they did do, and it was an out for Tottenham the whole day. What Manchester City ordinarily do is not give you an out. They don't give you an out. And then they got the out, but then the City back four weren't dealing with it either. So they were breaking through the midfield, which is unusual, but then they were breaking through the back line as well. Obviously, they're a good front three. So the two things that you ordinarily always think about with Pep Guardiola's teams defensively is winning the ball back early and sustaining the attacks, and then maybe the back four might sweep it up if, they, if the midfield don't win it. Those two things didn't happen today, and that's a real worry because it undermines your performance if you're getting counter-attacked against. I always remember the most difficult games that we had at Old Trafford were where we couldn't sustain attacks and we were having to attack and then run back to our own goal. If you're having to run back to your own goal, you have to start all over again, and that's what was happening today. Erling Haaland, discuss. I have to say, I played for a manager and I can hear him saying now, get your head up, Neville. You know, if there was a throw-in and I didn't see the strikers run, I can hear him saying it to scold, not too often to scold, (laughs) but I can hear him saying to other players, get your head up, get your head up. You're not seeing the runs. I can think of Ruud van Nistelrooy making those runs that constantly that Haaland's Haaland's made today and has not seen those runs. And he would absolutely batter us. It was the one thing you had to get the ball into your striker if that striker was making a run. Now, I said at some point in the first half, they didn't play that ball over the top once in the first half. What does that ball do if you play that ball over the top? I used to think in the game, you have to play the ball over the top of the left back. If I was my right back, I'd I'd throw that ball over the top of the left back or throw it over the left centre back or kick it over the left centre back and left back said at least a couple of times in the first 10 minutes. Chip it down the channel. That, what that makes them do, maybe you can do it with a bit more quality nowadays than maybe we did 10, 15 years ago, but what that makes the defenders do is think that you're going to play it in behind and then they drop off. Then you get your space to feet. It's really, really simple. It sounds sort of a little bit too basic for how these players play nowadays. I know they're tactically and technically incredible, so I'm not in any way, shape or form referring back to say you need to go back to play how we play because Pep Guardiola's designed football in a way which, to be fair, is unbelievable. But I have to say today that 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 back three for Tottenham, they don't feel like they've played against Erling Haaland. They've played against him, but they haven't played against him. 
They've not been threatened. He's made, I don't know how many runs, Martin. You've seen them. Mm. I've seen them. Jamie Carragher's seen them. The mm. people at home have seen them. The fans in this stadium have probably seen them where he's made that little run and he's gone in behind and he's made that run into that channel. And if you play that a couple of times in the first part of the game, it might then create that extra space in front for the other players like Alvarez or Bernardo Silva. It just allowed, because they never played it, the Tottenham back five, three, to squeeze. And I have to say, I think he's been let down in that game today, Highland. And I'm not quite... He looked like he felt he'd been let down as well. He's been let down. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. look, I've, I've, I don't want City to change. I'm not expecting yeah. Pep Guardiola all of a sudden to start playing sort of direct football or through passes and force the ball forward. Or leave him out. Or leave him out. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I think he has been let down today. And if Pep Guardiola and his coaching staff are watching that game back, which they will be tonight or tomorrow morning, they must be saying to their players, surely your first port of call is looking where Erling is and looking what he's doing. Because if you can get him through in one, then you're going to... You know, that might mean that you know they were forcing it probably a little bit earlier on the season at times when they were trying to find him maybe too much. They've left Kevin De Bruyne out, which is another factor. But that lad today, I, as I say, I'll repeat it, has been let down by the fact that they've not played to his strength. They've not played a pass to him. He didn't have one single attempt on goal, I don't think, in the game, unless it happened in the last couple of minutes. He's, he scored in one of the last seven away games, and that was two goals he got at Leeds, yeah. if you remember, a few weeks ago, yeah? Yeah, so yeah. look, he scored a bag full of goals. It's difficult to criticise Pep Guardiola, Manchester City, those players, because I trust them. They've got credibility with what they've achieved. The manager is a genius and one of the greatest mm -hmm. managers of all time. But we are allowed to point out that the leaving out of Diaz and Laporte, the... Uh, playing of obviously Rico Lewis at left back and then pulling him into midfield, allowing Kulisevsky down there, not having Gundogan in the team, not having De Bruyne in the team, it does start to raise flags. The Cancelo obviously, you know, letting him go in a, well, it was quick. <laughs> it was all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's, he's gone in a flash. He's, he snapped it, his fingers, you're gone, yeah. You're gone, yeah, you're out. Yeah, yeah. So there's things happening that are making me more, I say more nervous. I'm, don't want City to win the league. I'd prefer Arsenal to win the league out of City because I think the league needs it. And I think Arsenal deserve it at this moment in time. But in terms of my prediction, I'm actually more concerned before this game when I saw City's team today, not just now after they've lost. When I saw that team, I thought, he's still tinkering. Because I just think straight away, I look at it and think, OK, left back, Diaz and Laporte, Walker right back. You've got your solid back four there. That will that will really be difficult to penetrate if you Kulisevsky, Son and Kane. You put Gundogan and De Bruyne in front of Rodri. You've got then you sort of you've got your delivery in midfield. You've got Gundogan's sort of connectivity that he brings. You've got the the brilliance of Rodri. He looked exposed in that game today. Mm -hmm. And then you might have Alvarez, Grealish, uh, Mares, and obviously Haaland up front. Whichever one of those one you, ones you want to play wide, they have lost something with Sterling and Jesus. I mentioned it in commentary. They have lost something in the sense and that... And Zinchenko as well. And Zinchenko. If you want yeah. to, that was the strange thing you said at half-time. Yeah. And it, you're absolutely right. If you want a left-back to go and play in central midfield and be that sort of, if you like, play that dual position, he's probably the one of the best that you could find. So it seems strange more and more that Zinchenko's been let go. But the two wide players, Sterling and uh, Jesus, they did make those diagonal mm. penetrative runs in between full-back and centre-back. Jack Grealish and Mares very much stay wide, so they have lost a little bit of goal threat from those wide positions. That's obviously been replaced by a centre forward who can score more goals than the one they had last year. But things are changing a little bit and they're still working it out. We said at the start of the season it might take time for Erling Haaland to integrate into this team, but because of all the goals he scored, we sort of thought, well, he, well, he has settled in straight away, but he hasn't. Forget the goals, he hasn't settled in straight away in the sense of how they're using him and how the team's playing because it is scruffy at this moment in time. Uh, and a, a little bit of a worry, I would say. Not something that can't be overcome next week. We're watching, the, we're doing the game next week, aren't we? Manchester yeah. City and Aston Villa. And then they play, I think, Arsenal on the Wednesday. So they've got a big two games coming up and they could be within two points a week on Wednesday. But the reality of it is something isn't quite right. And I'm not sure of my prediction a couple of weeks ago because of Cancelo, because of the tinkering, because of what I see. And I have to say, I felt that before the game when I said it to you. It's worrying me if I was City, the way in which Pep Guardiola is in some ways just doesn't look like he's quite happy and settled with the squad. 